The system action called flex is a useful way to pass binary information around in the system. So on this uh, modular controller here, I have uh, taken a smart switch and assigned it to a flag. Let's just find it here on the configuration page. So you see the smart switch here has been set up to manipulate the system flag index zero. We have like 64 flags and even some memory banks we can use. So whenever I press this button down, it will set flag zero to true. And when I release the trigger, it will fall back to false. That's what it means. And let's just test. I press down and I release. And you see the color of the switch is changing. Uh, you also see a small LED over here. And what is this module anyway? This is a GPIO module. So, or GPI module, it has uh, eight inputs, eight outputs, and it connects to this modular system uh, we have made here. This is power supply for this small test board. And the LED that lights up indicates that output number one on the GPI connector is um, the relay inside flips, so it shorts the output to ground. Likewise, I have a number of buttons here. This button will actually um, trigger the, the input number one, which uh, will shortly configure to, um, to a flag. Okay, so the reason why the button lights up uh, green and the reason why this LED lights up green is because I have assigned, and, and that's obvious if we go back to uh, and click on output one, we can see for output one, I've also assigned system flag. And uh, I've chosen flag zero both here and over here, but actually it's the feedback flag I chose, which is the important part, because this feedback flag is what um, is used as information about whether or not the output should be shorted or not. Okay, so how does that make sense? Well, um, okay, so maybe just the, the main message is, as I press this button, flag zero, is set to true for as long as I hold it down. And it makes sense that output number one, output number one, then also flips the relay. And I'm claiming this is because feedback flag is zero. So far, so good. Now let's pick the input number one. And input number one is configured to set flag number one to true for as long as we hold that one down. In this case, the feedback flag is completely irrelevant because an input does not have any feedback. Um, the feedback for a button would be its color. So basically the output of a button is a button press, a trigger, while the feedback from the button would be the fact that it lights up. So what I will show now is when I go to this button and I change the feedback flag to one, what we should see when this is compiled and installed on the controller is that the, the color of the button should be green whenever I press the uh, or trigger the input number one, while when I just press this one, we should only see the LED over here flip, and that would kind of indicate that I'm, tr I'm right when I, I say that the feedback flag is what determines the color. And while we're waiting for the firmware, I'll explain why this could be very useful for a case where you want a button here to trigger a relay output. And that would be if for some reason you want to have confirmation of the action going back into the system. So assuming that you have this hooked up to some system externally, where the relay starts some function, and whenever that function is started and running, it supplies a trigger back to the system that will then indicate on the display that truly now some function has been enabled. Okay, so now I press the button, and you see there's no green color change on the button because the feedback flag was set to one, while the, the flag it manipulates is zero. This LED reflects the state of flag zero, while when I press this button, I'm setting flag number one for as long as I hold it down, and that is used to reflect the state of the button here. 
before we wrap this little session up, I want to show a configuration where this is used intensively. And that's for the RCP, one of our quite popular controllers. And it has on the back side a single channel input and output. That's the DB9 connector usually found on Sony RCPs. So um, what people uh, using this controller knows or any Sony RCP is that the joystick override button on the joystick is usually linked up with the relay on the back. And that's the case on our RCP as well. However, this is entirely due to configuration. So whenever I uh, press the, the button on the top or the preview button here, it will flip the, the relay. And we are using the flags inside the controller to do that. So we click the preview button and you see whenever I press the preview button, it will um, set flag zero to true for as long as it's held down. And if you go to the IO output, you see that the output has been set to flag 02 for its state. Likewise, you can see that the input is, using, is used to set flag one to true for as long as that is held down. And this trigger, the input trigger from outside can be used to enable a tally lamp or similar. That's basically the point of this one, which is also the reason why you see this additional action. So both we are setting the flag internally, which could be used elsewhere in the system. And then we are also setting, um, sending a command uh, to this particular device call. A nice feature for the flags is that you have additional options that makes them even more useful. And um, these are hidden in these boxes. First of all, you could choose to invert the flag. So instead of setting it true when you hold it down, it's actually set to false. So let's pick this one. Further, we also have a timing option. So you can decide that it should actually pulse. So for as long as I hold it down, it will be um, outputting false inverted. But I could also set a duration like, let's say, 500 milliseconds, so half a second. And then for the feedback flag, we have the same possibility of inversion. So, uh, and then let's choose toggle. So now we have a toggle switch that will, you know, go on and off, on and off. It will invert and it will have a 500 millisecond pulse uh, time going for it. So now the control reboots and we'll see. I now press. And every time I press, you see how the flag will turn off for half a second. And then it turns on again. So it turns off because of the inversion. And it turns on again automatically because of the timer.